It's been more than two weeks since we spoke with Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan outside her state house office about her appearance at AFPAC last month. To be associated with people who are anti-Semitic. Or... Stop, stop. Yes. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's the one. Yeah. Well, this week, that interview was taken to a whole nother level, forcing us to address it once again, because apparently our Lieutenant Governor wasn't exactly being completely truthful with us two weeks ago. First, some background. AFPAC stands for America First Political Action Conference and calls itself the alternative to CPAC, which is the Conservative Political Action, <clears throat> excuse me, Political Action Conference. That's held the same weekend and in the same city, usually, for the last three years. As we mentioned before, alternative is an appropriate adjective since many consider AFPAC to be a conference for the alt-right. After all, it is organized, headlined, and attended by white nationalists and anti-Semites. For example, Nick Fuentes, who we just mentioned who started AFPAC, took part in the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville and the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, and he said all kinds of things that fall under white nationalist, anti-Semite. He's a known white nationalist, anti-Semite, and a Holocaust denier. So here's a quick timeline of how this all played out. The Lieutenant Governor was invited to speak, but in her words, regrettably couldn't due to her commitments with the Idaho Senate. So she sent a six-minute video instead to AFPAC. It was played on Friday night, February 25th. On Saturday, word about our lieutenant governor's appearance at the White Nationalist Conference had made its way back to Idaho, with several organizations and political leaders calling for her to resign because of it. She doubled down, though, responding with, not a chance. On Monday, we waited outside her office to ask her about it, which we did. The rest of that week was filled with Idaho's Republican Party, Governor Little, and the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights, denouncing anyone's affiliation with such groups. We even spoke with Boise's Rabbi Dan Fink that Thursday, who told us McGeehan actually asked him about being part of an anti-Semitic task force, if there ever was one, which Rep. Rabbi Fink said he found, quote, laughable, considering her past policies and affiliations on top of, well, this latest one. Then this week, our interview outside her office gained new traction when it was posted on Twitter by a reporter working on a story for The Guardian, which brings us to what was put out into the zeitgeist yesterday. Lieutenant Governor McGeehan sat down for an interview with Jack Hadfield, the associate editor of Valiant News, a right-wing website which touts itself as being on the forefront of, quote, the 2016 counterculture led by President Donald Trump. About eight minutes into the interview, Hadfield said this. You spoke recently at a conference at AFPAC uh, in Florida where there are a lot of energized young conservatives who, you know, supported America First policies. Um, I was wondering if you could expand a little more on, on, the, uh, on, on, on the vitriol that you received for daring to speak to, uh, to young people who love America. Considering white nationalists and anti-Semites being labeled as young people who love America is interesting in and of itself. Which seems like a good time to tell you about Jack Hadfield. According to Muckrack, which is a website that compiles portfolios for journalists, Hadfield is a freelance reporter who covers free speech, censorship, and big tech. His byline has appeared on such websites as National File, New Right Network, Infowars, Breitbart. You can see where this is going. He was also outed as one of the administrators of a secret group on Facebook that frequently allows racist posts and alt-right content just to put that young people who love America in perspective. But before we hear Lieutenant Governor's answer, I think we should hear what she told us two weeks ago when we asked her if she knew what she was getting into by agreeing to appear at this conference. And if she did, why go ahead with it? Are you familiar with who puts this event on? Like Nick Fuentes? I don't, I don't know who he is. I don't, I've never met him. I don't know who he is. Did you not look into it before you decided to say okay? like to find out, I mean, his name is on it. Well, you know what, Nick Fuentes, I don't, as I said, I don't know him. I do, he, he's never, I've never met him. I don't know, you know, what, what is, what he's, everything that he says or doesn't say is not, uh, does not reflect on who I am or who the thousands of others that are participating in this movement. Okay. You didn't bother to look up his name or anything? I didn't like say that. You, you did look him up. You, you didn't, that's not the question that you asked me. Did you look up who Nick Fuentes was and what, he, he, what he's talked about? Like what he, things he has said? I have since. Since last week, not before? Yes. 
Okay, did you catch that? She didn't look into who Nick Fuentes was or what he has said or what he stands for before agreeing to appear at the AFPAC conference. That's what she said. But here's what she told Mr. Hadfield yesterday. Um, I was wondering if you could expand a little more on on the uh, on, on on the vitriol that you receive for daring to speak to uh, to young people who love America. On the cancel culture of the <laughs> illiberal left, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I was invited to present a video of of my commitment to the Idaho First policies and my vision for the state of Idaho and for America to these to thousands of young conservatives. I was invited by Michelle Malkin. And so, yes, I did know who I was talking to, who I was, who had invited me to speak at that conference. So she did know who she was talking to and who invited her to speak at that conference, which is quite a different thing than what she told us two weeks ago. She went on to add and imply, how can she be courting white nationalists, anti-Semites, after all, since she was invited by Michelle Malkin, whose family is from the Philippines and whose husband is Jewish? Is that the same as asking, how can I be racist? My cousin married a black person, I ask. And if you want to know more about Michelle Malkin, just check out her Twitter feed and you'll find out a lot about her. I asked Lieutenant Governor McGeehan today if she would clarify her difference in answers. She said, nothing has changed. I was speaking to a group of young America First conservatives and was invited by Michelle Malkin. The Malkin part, of course, she left out of our previous conversation. But would it have mattered? Like if your friend invites you to a dog fight where they're going to be serving pizza and you love pizza, do you go to that dog fight? So it appears Lieutenant Governor, she, she's double, triple, quadrupled down on being okay with appearing at an event organized by white nationalists.